As the Iron Curtain descended over Eastern Europe following the Second World War, when Joseph Stalin's Soviet Union held onto, or at the very least controlled, the land that it had gained as it fought back against Nazi Germany. It is an unfortunate impact of that Second World War that many wonderful football players remain largely ignored by the Western world, simply because they never got to see them. Bearing in mind that it was a rare to see foreign players at all throughout the 1960s, it was virtually impossible to see many great Eastern European players because of the isolationist nature of the Soviet countries. Even towards the end of the Soviet rule, many great sides were ignored or forgotten. One such side is the European Cup winning team of Red Star Belgrade in 1991, who defeated Marseille, the Galacticos of the early 1990s in the European Cup final. It seems almost bizarre to say that a European Cup winning side has been forgotten by history, but the 1991 Red Star team often have. Much like the great Honved side or the great Real Madrid sides are remembered, we need to remember the 91 Red Star team. They oozed class and represented to the West what Eastern football can be. They played a style that mirrored Gagan pressing or counter pressing in this modern game. The few articles that exist of them have described them as a team who sat deep and countered with pace, but this could not be further from the truth. They countered with great pace, but they also pressed extremely aggressively in midfield, leading to this counter attacking. It really is a very close to the style of play which was so successful in this day and age. Used by teams such as Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, and Liverpool. The side also featured that great bastion of football history, a libero in Bella de Dissi, whose story is something out of a Cold War novel. Bella de Dissi was a Romanian who had previously won the European Cup with Stal Bucharest in 1986, defeating Barcelona in the final and becoming the first Eastern European team to win the illustrious competition. And today, we look to recreate this incredible tactic and style of play by Lupko Petrovic and his side from that incredible 1991 Red Star team. Well, I bet you didn't expect that, viewers. Yes, welcome to the Omega Loot Gaming channel. A little bit of something different today. We have a tactical recreation by my good friend, and to be honest, I could call him a work colleague now, Ryan Cassidy, uh, who has created a Red Star 1991 tactic, which works really, really well. Uh, we're going to have a look at this team, break it down a little bit, using Red Star themselves and using some other teams as well and see exactly how they did. I want to know though down in the comments if you've ever heard of this little story from the 1991 European Cup final because to be honest, although I knew that they had won the competition in that year, I didn't really know much about it. So it was actually quite interesting to research this before, the game, before recording this uh, and get a little bit more of an understanding into this style of play and tactic that they used in 1991. So any comments about the story yourself or your interpretation of Red Star from 1991, maybe even the tactic itself, if you're Serbian yourself and you remember it really well, um, let me know down in the comments. I'm, I'm interested to hear it all from you. And of course, we have plenty more videos coming out in the future, including some more Wonder Kid videos, player spotlight videos, and tactic recreations and tactic... Uh, testers and everything like that here on the Omega Loot Gaming channel so make sure you are subscribed and you like the video because it all helps the YouTube algorithm. So here we are then viewers and we have finished top with Red Star quite comfortably with just one defeat throughout the whole season. So obviously Red Star are one of the favourite teams to win the Serbian League alongside Partizan who finished in second but I think winning, winning pretty much 28 games and only losing one Shows that we have something special on our hands here. So let's take a look at the tactic itself. This is it. It looks like a bit of a weird monstrosity, but Ryan Cassidy did a lot of research into this tactic and this style of play 
And this is kind of the shape that they went for. We have the libero. We have a fullback, but also we have no left back. We have a defensive winger here in Gavrich. Two ball, well, one ball playing defender and a centre defensive midfielder. Uh, and we also have two DMs. One as a Roman playmaker and one as a defensive midfielder. Alongside uh, an, a further midfielder in a box-to-box -box role. We have a winger here on support. So it does look very defensive, but... If we're only losing one game, then that suggests that it works and we're drawing a lot of games, but we've also won 28 in total throughout this season. So it suggests that this tactic most definitely works. We have a complete forward up front here, um, which you can see. And I will go through the player instructions, but I will also inform you viewers that if you want to download this tactic, you can do so by heading into my Discord. The link is down below for the Discord. I'll also pin it to the comments as well if I remember. Uh, join the Discord. If you go over to Ryan's tactics on the left-hand side, it's got a little fire emoji there. He will have this tactic there for you to download yourself. So you can trial it, you can use it in your team and see if it works. But I'm very interested because this is just, it kind of looks bonkers, doesn't it? It looks bonkers and I'm, I'm, I always like these kind of asymmetric tactics. It, it kills your OCD, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it looks incredible when it works. So, so here we go through the last player instructions here. So you can copy it yourself but if you choose not to download it. But we have an attacking mentality. If we go in possession, we're keeping it simple, viewers. We're attacking wide. Uh, we're playing it out of defense. Slightly more direct, much higher tempo. We're working the ball into the box. We're not wasting our chances here. We're running out of defense and being more expressive. In transition then. If we go to the in transition, we are playing a Gagan press tactic. Like we mentioned in the monologue at the beginning, uh, this tactic style was really ahead of its time. We are Gagan pressing before Gagan pressing was even a thing, viewers. Distributing the ball to the defenders, throwing it long, uh, out of possession, we can see here. We're playing high, much higher defensive line as well, using the offside trap, forcing the opposition out wide as well, using tighter marking, preventing a short goal kick distribution, because by the sounds of it, this tactic, you are on them. As soon as they have the ball, you are trying to win it back, and that is why the Gagan Press tactic works so well now. And really, if you think about it, if that was the case back then in a, in a side which I, to be honest, I've never heard of any of those players. I looked at the Red Star team from 1991. I've never heard any of those players. It was a year before I was born, granted, but I knew a lot of players from before I was born, like European wide. I know a lot of players from watching old World Cups and European football. I've never heard of any of these. And it doesn't exactly matter that they're a superstar if they all worked as a team They've managed to win what is now a Champions League trophy. Uh, and for a Serbian side, that probably would never have happened back then. So we're staying on feet as well. This is the tactic we are looking at. It looks incredible. As we already have established, they've won the league here. We have the top goal scorer in a, with a player here who is rather good, to be honest, as a complete forward. Uh, some good average ratings. But we want to see more of the team stuff for this. We did score the most goals. We had the second amount of most goals. Most points per game was easily us. But look how many stats we are dominating here. Fewest shots against. We had the most possession at 56%. Uh, the best passing completion. Most dribbles were made. The fewest conceded by a lot. 15 goals conceded less than the second team. And we also, of course, had the most clean sheets by eight clean sheets. So it's kind of like just shutting the door and not in not allowing your opposition to score any goals whatsoever. And we will have a look at this tactic in other teams as well. We've got two more sides to take a look at. Uh, one more of a mid-table team and one as, as a dominant team as well. Um, and let's have a look at the competition. We won the Serbian Cup. Not down the group stage of the European Cup, but obviously we, we come up against a lot better players at that point. So... Um, obviously, Red Star, they did have a lot of really good players back in 1991. It's just, like we mentioned earlier, you probably never heard of them. Um, so that obviously didn't help. So I'm really impressed with this tactic so far. Um, I want to see a little bit more. If we just go to and have a look uh, at a few other things. So if we have a look at the analyst report here. You can see uh, against the Super League average, we kind of really dominated. Our shot percentage was the only thing which was on average. But the rest of it, we were one of the highest 
if not the highest in the league for passing percentage, tackling, goals per game, XG per game, conceded per game. Obviously, we kind of guessed that. And XG against, we were easily the highest. Goal scoring then. So this is quite interesting to see. These are like the, the kind of shots that we had XG wise, if you kind of understand that. Goals, we scored 42 goals around the penalty spot, 19 around the 60 yard box, a few from the outside. Assist wise, that's annoying that that hasn't come up on here anymore, but that's, that's fine. We'll ignore that. Uh, my head is kind of in the way, so we can I move? Let's move me over here. Ooh, here we go. Uh, I'm over here now. Uh, six from corners. Free kicks were 12. Short passes and assists, seven. Crosses were 15. Three balls were 15. And opposition mistakes was only six. Now, if you think about that, that's quite impressive as well. Um, I don't know whether opposition mistakes is high or low for opposition mistakes of six. Not too, not too sure myself. Square balls, one. Medium passes, one. So let's have a look at the conceding goals then as well. Because obviously we've seen how many we scored from certain positions. Look at this. Only seven goals from outside the box here. 14 from around the penalty spot. 10 from inside the six-yard box. Uh, assists that we conceded through balls were 15. They could not break us down with crosses or short passes. Uh, even set pieces were good. It was just one opposition mistake. 15 of the goals we conceded were from through balls. And just to make sure that you can see how we played here, the formation that we used 100% of the time was this formation. Now that we can see from this that 50 matches we played this exact tactic. Okay, so to have a look at another side here, we go to Turkey. Now, Trabzonspor, I've actually tried using in a player spotlight recently, and we failed miserably. We got sacked six out of six times. We finished second here. So that is a huge success, finishing second in the Turkish uh, Super League. If we look at the season preview, we're predicted to finish in fourth. I think that's higher than what it is at the start of the season for some reason. Maybe uh, they signed players. Or something, I don't know. But fourth, we finished in second place. Only five points behind top. We only lost six games in total against some of the biggest teams there in the Turkish division. Um, and again, we did rather well. Semi-final of the cup, knocked out by Fenerbahce. I consider this a big success. If we take a look at these stats-wise, I'm interested to see how many of them we had. So fewest conceded, we were second only three behind Galatasaray. Most clean sheets, we had one less clean sheet than Galatasaray ourselves. Um, so not too bad whatsoever. The most goals, we are fourth in that. Most points per game, second. So we've done quite well. Uh, possession, we had high possession in the last one. We didn't have high possession in this one, interestingly enough. Weird. And finally, let's take a look at the last team, Shakhtar Donetsk. Now, we know that they are the one of the two biggest teams in Ukraine, but we still managed to win it. Nonetheless, we lost zero games, viewers. We lost zero games. So Dynamo Kiev, who... I... <laughs> okay, this is weird. They also lost zero games. Um, they still couldn't win the league. We managed to do that because we won one more game than they did. So that's... That... I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's rather strange. Okay, but we'll ignore it anyway. We, we went on an unbeaten season and we won the league with this Shakhtar team. How do we do in other cup competitions? Uh, we can see a knocked out the group stage, knocked out the quarterfinals, and we won the Super Cup there. So I, I'd say that's quite disappointing, really. Um, unlucky, maybe, against the Pro, who are the third best team in Ukraine. So we did lose in Ukraine at some point. It was just in the cup, but that's fine. Won the league, unbeaten. Got to be happy with that. Stats-wise, if you look at the team overview, fewest conceded goals was by us, again by 11 goals. No, nope, that's wrong. Nine goals. Uh, most clean sheets, we won that by two as well. Uh, fewest shots against, we were the highest of that by a country mile, by the way, viewers. Um, that is insane. 90, only 90 shots against us compared to second positions, 155. That is very good. That is very good. So I'm pleased with that. Absolutely pleased with that. Uh, but the rest of it, we kind of just dominated, didn't we? The most goals were scored by Dynamo Kiev. But you don't need to score the most goals if you're hardly conceding anything. And we still managed to win the league despite scoring five less goals than Dynamo Kiev. So we've got to be very happy with that. 
I really like this tactic, to be honest. When Ryan said he was doing a recreation, I was unsure of it to begin with. Until I really looked into it and what he had accomplished here, um, it's quite impressive. It really is impressive. And if you have the players to suit this tactic, you might want to try this because you could dominate your league and hardly concede any goals. And it might be a weird way of playing football uh, because a lot of people like to score a lot of goals. And you are scoring a lot of goals, but... You're just not letting anything in, and it's just remarkable, really. So there we have it then, viewers. Let me know down in the comments if this is the type of thing that you really enjoy, and I'm sure Ryan Cassidy would love to make some more tactics going forward. He is, of course, hard at work making usual tactics, but if you want to see him make some recreations, then let us know some recreations you want to see down in the comments. Of course, we have some more player spotlights coming up very soon. Some more Wonder Kid experiments and everything like that. So make sure you're subscribed or helps the channel. And of course, we also have twitch.tv forward slash Gaming. Should you wish to watch some live action Luke? He's a nice person. He can be entertaining, I suppose. Sometimes. Uh, it's fun, anyway to say the least, and we have the Youth to Gold coming up very soon. So that's more reason to follow the Twitch and to stay in check with the Youth to Gold series. Only allowed to sign teenagers, not allowed to use 30 plus euros. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you for the next one, viewers. Bye-bye.